Hello friends and welcome back to another Friday with me. This week I decided to take the paper bag skirt and refashion it so that I could get more wear out of it. Do you want to see what I did? I know you do. Well, you know you got to stick around. I'm Nye with Ellie and Mac. Let's do it! Okay, I'm glad you came back. So here is my paper bag skirt. In order to go on with this tutorial, you're going to need a paper bag skirt. Beep, beep. You might need a little bit of three quarter inch elastic or half an inch elastic. You are going to need a buttonhole foot for one option with a very small button and your sewing machine. Okay. Of course, you're going to need like scissors and a ruler too. <laughs> okay, so first things first. If you have ever seen the paper bag skirt pattern, this is the most beautiful waistband. I love the ruffle. It's so gorgeous. And so what I want to do is I want to flip the script and put it upside down. In order to do that, essentially, I just put it on upside down. <laughs> That's what I did. Okay, so in order to do this top, you wanna to put the skirt on upside down so that this ruffly waistband is where you'd like to keep it. Now, watch out y'all, because if you fold it down quite a bit, you're gonna have the cutest little crop top. I'm 45, so my crop top is not a crop top, it's going to be at my waist. <laughs> and the cool thing about this pattern is that this waist that you made is already measured for your waist. So you should be able to get this over your waist, no problem. Now, the rest of the skirt is not fitted, so unless you have a substantial bust, you should be able to fit it over your bust. Now, the first thing you wanna do is put on the skirt upside down and then fold down the hem to the length that you would like the top to be. Remember, you cannot put toothpaste back in the tube, y'all. Don't cut it until you're ready, okay? You can't put the fabric back without looking crazy. So <laughs> let's turn this skirt inside out because that's the best way to determine where you want that line. And what you're gonna do is, or what I did, is I folded it inward, okay? And then I pressed it. So I have a nice crease where I would like my top to be the top of my skirt. What? Shirt. This is gonna be frustrating. Like, I'm just gonna keep saying skirt and y'all are gonna be like, Naisa, Nai, girlfriend, you're making a top, not a skirt. And I'm gonna be like, yep, you're right. Once you have it folded, you wanna press it just a little. Now this fabric is Rayon Chalice from the Style Magnolia. If you remember, I made five of these skirts in one video to show you how different fabrics behave with this particular pattern. So I'll post a link so that you can see that, okay? It's a cute video and I think it's really helpful to know the different types of woven fabrics and their weights and how they behave with certain um, patterns. So here we go. Okay, now you can see I have that hem folded downward, okay? So I know y'all, this skirt has pockets. And so remember the pockets when you try it on need to be in the front. Reason being is because if you actually still wanna use those, you can for some small, maybe light items. Um, and then you don't really have to mess with them at all. Or you could choose to just sew them closed and not use them at all. Now what you wanna do is you wanna determine, do you want to use buttonholes in a drawstring on the top, or would you like to use elastic, in which case yeah. you, you wanna have about an inch that you sew from this folded edge all the way around, leaving about an inch and a half to two inches open so that you can thread some elastic. In order to measure the elastic, I recommend that you first take the elastic out, stretch it, wrap it around your body and overlap it. If you're not going to use that option, 
we move on to the button option. You'll unfold your fabric on the front of your skirt, find the center, find the center marking between your, um, on your front hem. Once you find the center of that hem, measure over about an inch on each side and this is where you're going to put your buttonholes. Use some interfacing, go ahead and press some interfacing here and then sew your buttonholes right there. Then when you're done sewing your buttonholes, make sure, actually, make sure that your buttonholes are about a half an inch from the edge. Because remember, this is all gonna be ruffling up, and so this crease is actually going to be the upper edge of your bodice. So make sure that the buttonholes are just far enough down so that you're not really having a drawstring come out the very top edge of your top, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So half an inch down, one inch apart from the center, put your buttons. Now, button size, I would use a very small button size because once you open up the button holes, they can be quite large if you use a larger button. Um, but you can use whichever size that you like. And I'll show you some pictures of that because I've already done one uh, with buttonholes on it. So now I'm going to do this with elastics. <laughs> So all I have to do is sew around the hem. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I have my hem sewn, or it's gonna be the top, <laughs> top hem sewn, I'm gonna go ahead and thread through some elastic. Now, in order to measure your elastic, you literally could just stretch out your elastic a little bit, wrap it around your upper bust area directly underneath your armpits because that's where your top is gonna to be. You don't want to use too little elastic because what you don't want is for it to squish everything in your upper body so that you can't breathe. So make sure that it's snug but not overly tight and be sure that it is tight enough so that it can actually help assist in holding up your top. Okay? Now, if you are doing the button option, at this point, you should be done sewing your buttonholes and now you want to go ahead and sew around the length of your skirt. Don't worry about leaving anything open because on the opposite side is where your buttonholes will be and you will be able to pull your string or drawstring through those buttonholes on each side. So now I'm just gonna thread this elastic. Now that I have my elastic through, I want to make sure that I keep my elastic flat. I'm going to overlap it by about an inch and then I'm going to sew a square or I will sew by zigzag stitch to make sure that this stays nice and taut. And then I will close around this hem so that the elastic stays nice and encased in the top part of my top. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Those of you that are doing buttonholes should be finishing up uh, the hem around, which should be underneath where your buttonholes are. And you can go ahead and thread in your waistband, which would make a super cute bow, uh, and also hold up your top at the same time. Or you may find a piece of ribbon or something cute that matches your paper bag skirt and throw that in there and see how that goes. Okay, remember if you're doing the drawstring method, you are not going to have anything but this string. So you have to tie it hecka tight to make sure that top stays up. And yes, hecka tight is actually a word. It is now, don't judge me. I'll be right back. Okay, so now the top edge of my new top is finished, uh, sort of, well the hem part is finished. So what you need to do now is try it on. Try it on, 
cinch it up nice and tight where you're going to wear it. If you want to have straps on your top, you can use the waistband or you can sew up something from extra fabric or you can use ribbon if you like. I'm going to go ahead and use the straps that I already have. My husband came in my sewing room. I know, clutch the probe. Ah, let him in here! <laughs> and he helped me to position my strap. Now, in order to do less sewing, <laughs> oh, Mango, my cat is, <clears throat> my cat is under the table rubbing on my legs. And so I think he wants a little bit of attention. Don't you, Mango? Say hi to the people. Say hi, Mangoes. Hmm. Okay, I'll stop. Ugh. Okay. So what you need to do is just put it on in order to position your straps. Now, the reason why I say that is because if you are not wearing it, when you position your straps, remember that when you have that cinchy top thing, once you cinch it, those straps are going to move because they're permanent. So <laughs> please help yourself out and do yourself a favor and sew in your straps after you've tried it on, mark it, and then sew them to your top. So in order to save myself some sewing, look, these edges are already finished. So essentially I just pinned one side to the back and I put a pin in the front. What I'm going to do is actually sew straight through this and put a button there. Do not sew your strap onto your drawstring. If you're using elastic, it's fine. It's because your elastic is already evenly distributed all the way around your top. But if you're using a drawstring, remember that area needs to have some mobility. So you need to sew it at this line, at your hemline, okay? And so make sure that when you pin it in there, that you pin it so that you have enough space to sew it where you rolled down your fabric and hemmed it, okay? Very, very important. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure both of my straps will be the same length. I've marked this side as well. So I will just make sure that I have the same length. Also, trying your top on helps you to put your strap in the same place as your bra. <laughs> if you wear a bra. I don't know, I'm not judging anybody, okay? Because half the time when I come home, it comes off and I'm just like, I'm done for the day. That's, that's everybody's signal that I am finished for the day. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to pin these on here, right there, because I'm going to sew a faux button on there. I'm not putting any buttonholes. I'm just going to sew a button because I think it's going to be cute. And then I'll pin this to the back. Now I'm going to look at both sides and make sure that they're even in depth, just like that. Perfect. Basically, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and roll these two sides in, create a bow, and tack it to the bottom of my to the bottom of my top. And I'm going to sew my straps right here at the hemline and the front. I'm going to put a faux button on there because it's gonna look super cute and tack this down as well. I decided for this top, I'm gonna leave the pockets because I like the idea of putting my hands in there. So cute. Um, so I may just close them up just a tad so they don't have such a huge opening, but for the most part, I think we might be done. What? <laughs> All right. I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. I had a ton of fun making this top and the other one that I also made. Um, I'll show you some pictures of me wearing it, but this is what it looks like. And it has the, well, let me get my glasses up. But this is what it looks like, and it has the little straps. Super cute, right? And the ruffle waist, which used to be also the waist. <laughs> and a bow at the bottom. So this was super fun. I had a good time restyling this skirt into a top that I'm going to love on all summer. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you try some restyling of your own. I had a wonderful time with you this week. I hope that you stay cool. I hope that you stay happy. And I hope that you have fun sewing other things. <laughs> Bye, my friends.